people turn towards you because either you're not allowing them to take advantage of you or to disrespect or use you. That's number one. The moment you figure out that I'm not going to let you take advantage of me anymore or use me or abuse me or disrespect me in any kind of way, they change towards you. They change. You become, you used to be the happening thing, but oh, this time, I don't know what's wrong. I think she's big headed. I think she thinks she's big headed. I think she thinks she's all that. I've heard them say that to me before. I, he thinks he's all that. Yes, I am all that. Because when I'm going through it, you were not there to lift me up. When I'm passing through it, you were not there to help me at all. All you did was mock behind me and spoke against me. But Jesus came and said, I'm going to give you rest. And he broke away every infirmity that was holding me bound. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I've come to liberate one or two people. And if you are the one, you're going to jump up and say, I'm free from every, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. From every shackle of the enemy. Number two, people change towards because you have something that they wish they had. People will change towards you for one reason because either you have something that they wish they have seen it all. <laughs> you know these copycat people. People like to copy. I like to be. An innovator, not an imitator. You copy. You want to dress like me? You want to talk like me? You want a wife like my own? You have to go through what I went through. Somebody says, stay in your lane. The problem with some people is that they don't know how to stay in their lane. And you are not in their lane, but they want to cross your lane. There's two different things, my dear. The Bible says fearfully and wonderfully made. That means there are some people that are beautiful. There are some people that are fearfully. <laughs> An ugly person, no, they are ugly. You are categorizing the fearful department. Not in the wonderful. That, that, that's what fearfully and wonderfully. That's my own definition. Don't go research that on any. That's my own level. So sometimes when you carry a little baby, and you carry the baby, and the baby smiles at you, that means you're wonderfully made. And the baby gives you a good smile. Wonderful. But when you carry a baby, and the baby, the baby starts crying, the baby is telling you, you are in the department of fearfully made. Because your face is a little bit scary to me. That's just a joke. Number three, people change towards you because they are jealous of the person you have become. They are jealous of the person you have finally become. They thought your life was going to remain the same. They thought your life was going to be a beggar. You used to always beg them for everything. Can you help me with this? I need the right to this. I need the right to that. You didn't go to school. And all of a sudden now things have changed on your life. And then you have become somebody different. And now they are looking at you. You are no longer begging. You Instead you are the one that is giving. They become jealous of who God has made you to be. That was what happened in the story of that woman. Of that woman. Give me Luke 8 48, 43. Luke 8 43 to 40, 48. Ooh, somebody say, I feel this. Say, I feel this. Now, listen to this. The Bible says, and there was, give me MSG again. Let's read that. Oh, no, leave that, leave that. That's good. That's okay. That's okay. The Bible says, and there was what? A woman who had had a discharge of what? Did you see the infirmity? The first one was how many years? 18 years. This other woman was how many? Ask you before, how long have you been carrying that problem? How long have you been trying to deal with that situation? 
has you been carrying that infirmity now it doesn't have to be blood discharge but there's something else discharging in you for 20 years some of you have been in this country for those of you who are aliens have been here for over 30 years is an infirmity and you're still trying to wonder how do I make my way out how do I get my way home how do I regularize my status in this place and some of you have been in some certain kind of abusive relationship have been in the same job nothing has changed it's the same money it's the same thing nothing is changing it's the same thing for 12 years and the Bible says, and though she spent all her living on physicians Dr. A I have this issue he looked at it no solution Dr. B I have this problem no solution you see sometimes God will allow you God's silence does not mean that he's silent God's silence doesn't mean that he's silent sometimes God will allow some things in your life because he's taking you through a process and when he takes you through a process, God takes out some things. In the process, he disconnects you from some friends. In the process, he takes away some relationship. In the process, he makes you to stop. Something just happens in the process. Things just fall out. Even some family members, he disconnects you from some certain family members. You know why he's doing that? So you can trust and look up to him. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, she did all she could, healed by anyone. She could not be healed. Go to 44. She could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him. Now, Jesus, she heard that there was somebody else. You need somebody to tell you the truth. You see about the rating we're doing today? And you know, church folks, they baffle me. You come to church, you get blessed. You can't tell anybody. You can't tell, you're hindering somebody else's blessing. She heard that somebody who is healing people is in town. Because she had tried everything. You know a lot of people who are dealing with all kind of things. All they need is just the word of God that will change their life completely, their family totally. All you need is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He's got the answer in his hands. She heard. Somebody say, faith comes by hearing. It was a savior. Who is the physician of physicians? Who is the judge of all judges? Who is the doctor of all doctors? And she said, I don't need to even have contact with him. Her faith became alive. Her faith came up. And that's why when you come to church, don't look at the man of God. Look at the God of the man. That if I believe in the God of that pastor, I will be delivered. I will be healed. The Bible says, and immediately when she saw him, she snuck in and touched him. That's why I don't like people distracting me because there's a virtue. I like people distracting me when I'm preaching. Because sometimes it disturbs the spirit. The Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so while he was ministering, the woman touched not his body. She touched just a part of his clothes. Just a part of him that carried his sweat. You see the way I'm sweating? That's all she believed. If I can only but touch this man that I heard, I put my faith. He said, I'm going to be delivered. He said, I'm going to prosper. He said, I'm going to be married. He said, I'm going to make it. He said, I'm going to, oh, he said, if I can just, just, that's all I need. We don't need much. And the Bible says it was a fringe, means just a hem. 
a fringe, a little part. Not like this. Discharged the blood issue that she had. Are you listening? I got it, I got it. Give me the next verse, 40, 45. Give me the next verse. It says, and Jesus said, the moment a virtue leaves, the anointing upon the man of God or the pastor or the prophet, he feels it. Who touched me? When all denied him, Peter said, that's why I said when I go to heaven, I want to see Peter. Because Peter is like, look, very inquisitive, very curious. And Peter said, Master, what, 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 what are you talking about? We got thousands of people here. We got crowds surround you and are pressing on you. How did you know that somebody touched me? Because a fraction went out of me. What you're looking for is not a decoration. It's what went about you. That's what you should be after. A church with virtue. A church with power. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I perceive the power has gone out of me. That's why when I finish ministry, this way I don't like somebody to stop me. I want to go in and see me. Because so much has gone out of me. He said, I perceive something has gone out of me. Go to 47. Listen. Listen to what he said. And when the woman saw she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people. See what God is doing here. See what's happening here. Whenever God heals you or delivers you, don't hide it. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, in the book of Revelation, I think 12, 11 or so, he said, and we overcame him by the and by the words of our testimony if God delivers you from anything you gotta tell it you gotta tell the people I am free God delivered me from alcohol he delivered me from addiction he delivered me from pornography you gotta tell the people that God has changed you you see and she came falling down and all the people where she had touched him and how she had been immediately Your faith, your faith came alive. It wasn't you that touched me. It was your faith that touched me. It wasn't you that touched me because until your faith is connected with God, you will be delivered. Until your faith is connected with the master, you will not be delivered or breakthrough. Are you listening to me? And he says to her, your faith has made you walk in peace. You have to understand that your, your being through is preparing you for your breakthrough. It's preparing you. Some of you here are multi millionaires Some of you here have business expansion. I'm telling you right now, you got to key into it. Don't worry about anybody saying A, B, C, D, whatever they are saying. It's just your being through. How are you going to do it? You don't know. But the Bible say, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, he shall condemn it in judgment. Because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You're not listening to me. Let every tongue rising against you this morning be condemned. Let every tongue rising against your miracle be condemned. Let every tongue rising against your breakthrough be condemned. Let every tongue rise in against your relationship, against your marriage, against your business, against your ministry, against your family. Let it be condemned in the name of Jesus. When God is elevating you, your company will change. Are, are you listening to me? The things I used to do, I do them no more. My company 
company has changed the places I used to go I go there no more because there is a great change that has taken place on the inside when God is elevating you things around you will change why you don't hang out with us no more things have changed why are you not clubbing with me no more? Things have. Hey, why are we gossiping anymore? Things have. Hey! This God is too good. Oh. Things have changed when God is elevating you. Things have changed. Oh, people wrote me one time and said, Are you the same James or James? You know why? Because things have changed. Are you the same? He said, Behold, all things have behold, all things have become. There's a great change. But you know, a lot of times people will not believe that you've changed. Even when you tell them you're now a Christian, you go to church, they're like, Really? You? If you go to church, then I'd be the first to go to heaven. They down you like that. But yes, it doesn't matter. Because you are a walking progress. You are a walking progress. Things will gradually become changed in your life. Are you listening to me? This morning, I don't know who I've come to preach to. Maybe your situation is just on fire. You just with that in front of you. It is well with my soul. That's how you are. Oh, morning, afternoon, night. You are like this. I go to church. I pay my 